We European players know almost everything about uh, American players. A bit, a bit like how how European uh, basketball fans follow the NBA all the time. It's a bit the same thing, and it's really amazing to to suddenly uh, meet all the people, you know. And it's yeah. crazy. Armada cheering alongside Captain Jack. I'm sitting there doing commentary uh, next to Doggy Salmon. No, Some yeah. Those guys shout to you. Wait, what? These murmurs start echoing to the crowd. Isaiah, Isaiah, and you know, eventually we get word of this. They're trying to get Isaiah up. The hype was building that entire time. It's like you put a lid over a boiling pot and eventually it's gonna bubble over. So the crowd is chanting his name and eventually he walks in and everyone's just looking around like, this is gonna be Isaiah versus Captain Jack in the year 2012. This is like the best moment of my life. And then the match begins. Okay, here we go. This is Isaiah against Captain Jack. You know, I always wanted to do this. Isaiah! That's pretty bad. You need to wait for him to do something though. Right now he's just kind of rolling around. He's getting slapped in the he's face. He's not getting hit. Oh, he's getting hit with needles. <laughs> I to say what? He got slapped. All right. Captain Jack just constantly charged the needles and throw him at Isaiah. Cause Isaiah's remembering how to play this game. <laughs> yeah, he's, it's he's, been a while. He literally just got off of Smash 64, so he probably needs to remember some things, you know. When he wants to, he's going to turn up the Jets. That didn't happen. So, no, Isaiah, he's done this before. He's just sat around and then just gone in the morning. Stocks. Why don't get four stock, I say. Don't get four stock. Please don't. Don't get hit. I don't believe you, Isaiah. The crowd is stunned. That was uh in hindsight, that was as Isaiah as anything Isaiah's ever done. Last time we got a shake, it wasn't that good. Really? It was okay. What kind of shake did you get? Yeah, strawberry. I'm gonna get a smoothie this time, though. My favorite food is in uh, Manhattan. I'm gonna get that soon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's uh, worse than sausages. You know, the one I get is called the Joseph Stalin Dictator Special. Yeah. The Dictator Special, you can't choose the kind of worst that you get. But the Democracy Special, you can pick. <laughs> yeah, I think that one costs more. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but they just play video games. Super Mario World. Oh, the Ninja Turtles game. Yeah. Turtles, Turtles in Time. time. Yeah. yeah. Final Fight 2. That's oh, right. Yeah. That was when you had to go rescue the girl, right? I think so. Yeah. Did you have a good family life when you were growing up? Mm. But my family's not really close. My parents divorced when I was 10. My mom had to work a lot, so she, she could never be around us too much. But my, my dad would always take us to like the beach or outside to the creek <laughs> when we were like little kids. That's cool. What is it about 64 that keeps you playing after all these years? Just something I really like doing, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like hiking. You know, I'll be hiking for the rest of my life. Nice. Kind of like that. Yeah. Might be playing the game for it until there's no one else left other than me. Then I might stop. 
Isaiah and I were, you know, on an epic quest to like go to as many tournaments as we can to support each other. You know, after every tournament, we'd end up splitting the money so we can travel to the next tournament. They're all underground. Um, not many players will enter. We won't make too much money, but enough to get us to the next tournament and hopefully make more money. By the middle of 2004, the competitive melee scene was getting big. New tournaments were larger, better run, with bigger cash prizes attracting top players from across the country. New York's Smash for Cash, MDVA's Getting Schooled, and Melee FC, hosted by the Kish Brothers of South Bend, Indiana. Misunderstood enthusiasts living an extraordinary existence for cash. The very first FC was, was amazing because I think that was like the second or third time that Ken and Azen had met each other. Like that rivalry was really starting to heating up, heating up at that point. I didn't get to go to FC and I was really regretting it because it ended up being huge and like a massive success and the top three was Ken, Az and Isaiah again, which was crazy. I think those three in particular, Ken, Azen and Isaiah, were, were just a level or two above everybody else, just absolutely without question. FC also gave birth to a new type of group competition known as a crew battle. Kish Squared had seen something similar in animes like Yu Yu Hakusho and Flame of Rekka and wanted to try it as an event in Melee. A crew of players would pool their stocks together and compete against other crews, planning lineups and character selections to counter opposing lineups. At FC, a West Coast crew lined up to face an East Coast crew for the first time. The West Coast crew ended up being Ken, Isaiah, Mike and Jared from Canada, and me. I went first against Wes and did oh, all right. After me came Jared. He got a stock or two from Wes, but then he lost all of his also. Then was Mike from Canada. He finally eliminated Wes, and then he had to fight Oro Samus. He lost too many stocks against Wes to really be able to make much of a dent in Oro. So then it was just Ken and Isaiah against Oro's last stock, husband and wife, and Dave and Azen. And so Isaiah just went into beast mode. He went try hard. absolutely ridiculous to just see him just plow through like the entire East Coast. The Falcon wasn't a, a very well used character back then. The aggressiveness and the speed and the combos and everything that goes with that character, scary. So it's just, it was probably more scary than a lot of other players just because he used Falcon, just because he was going to knee you three times and kill you in like one crazy combo. People weren't really used to that back then. He's one of the most technical old school players I know, like till this day. Like, he's even more technical than Ken or everyone. It's just that, um, so sometimes he'd be over-aggressive and that'll probably be his downfall. Falcons players, they don't play to win. They, they play to have fun. Everyone cheers for the Falcon player. Isaiah is like, he has all the technical stuff from 64, but it doesn't look like he was trying to win back when he was playing this fight. He was just trying to like please the crowd. Isaiah, he's a weird guy. I know Dan has told me like he would just send him a random instant message. So what's a Krabby Patty? Like <laughs> I, we have conversations with him. He can like kind of predict what you're gonna say. So when you say hi, and he's like no. <laughs> and I was like, okay. He was just very goofy, very shy. He would say like a couple words, but they'd always make you laugh. He used to have this guy called Mr. Happy. I don't know if you heard about this. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Just this massage tool that he had. It was just like this weird back massage, and like he'd just be like, oh, I brought Mr. Happy, and he'd just like massage your back for a minute. Some people say no, but he'll, you know, he'll still force it on you. It's two from Isaiah. That may, oh, that feels good. It felt, it felt good. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. People loved him for that because you know it was, it was different. It was unique. <laughs> yeah, I have two friends. I couldn't have more friends, but 
the people I talk to are, are Smash people. Right. And they live far away, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy. You can't hang out so easily. Don't talk to too many uh, people from Melee after I stop playing. It just stopped being fun for you? Yeah. Stop being fun. Competitive Melee had grown to the point where business opportunities were becoming hard to ignore. Among a few failed startups, one company outshone all the rest and helped to begin a new era for Smash. When I stepped in the room, I bring the heat like the month of June. It was a new um, business opening up Major League Gaming. They wanted uh, to pick out some popular games to add to the roster. Usually at, at tournaments, I'd have to win doubles and singles to get like $800. If I was just to win singles alone, that's $1,000. They had the legit amount of prize money with these extra goodies for winning as well. well there was MLG girls going around, you know, giving hugs and whatnot. They had all these like hot chicks lined up giving out goodies. Like we took our pictures with them, which I thought was awesome at the time. You know, it felt good because it was the first step out of the underground tournament scene. Back episode three of the MLG Vidcast. I'm your host Chris Puckett coming at you from the MLG Studios here in New York City. My favorite part about teams is how good it feels when you win because you guys, you know, you guys did it together and you worked together to do it. You always have to be there. You can't be a selfish player and and sit there and you know camp all day. The first individual that comes to my mind when I think about amazing teams players is Isaiah. If you've seen Isaiah, what he does best is he is always there for Ken. It's just Isaiah just tearing a hole through everything in his path. Isaiah is w without question the best team's player to ever play the game. I don't think anyone would challenge that. And when you put him uh, in a team with the best singles player at the time, it was absolutely daunting and playing them was ridiculous because they would play with Marth Falcon and if you somehow found a way to get the edge over Marth Falcon, they'd just play Marth Sheik and then it was just stupid. Isaiah's Sheik is, is dumb, is stupid, is ridiculous. You feel like he's breaking the game and it's not even any fun to play against. He's, he gets you by the balls and doesn't let you go. Isaiah grabbed forehand to get combo off. Oh, oh no, cool. they missed the up throw. Isaiah Buff can really die easily at this percent, so can PC. Oh no, here goes PC. It's and it's Isaiah. King versus Isaiah. King versus Isaiah. It's crazy close. Oh, here's the grab. Oh, and Isaiah goes for the up air. He missed. Oh! Huge comeback. Huge comeback. Huge comeback by Ken and Isaiah. And they won the fifth match against PC Chris. I love this room. This, Isn't it great? This, no one laughs. You know, not, not, not like hundreds of loud people. You know, just peaceful. Mm -hmm. You know what? New Jersey has some good tap water. <laughs> Way better than San Jose. <laughs> Did you like San Jose? Yeah, I do like San Jose. Yeah. Especially now because all the hills, I'm a hiker. Yeah. Yeah. And NorCal is good because uh, year round, you, you know, you have to worry about <laughs> much of snow or, or bears. You know, you have to worry about bears. <laughs> 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 you might have to worry about mountain lions, but I've never seen one. Yeah, I always imagine myself fighting off a mountain lion. Yeah. I did that too. I imagine myself kicking a, a mountain lion off the like a cliff, <laughs> and I was saving a, I was saving a little girl from the mountain lions. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> I daydream a lot. I think of things happening that haven't happened. Like I pretend they're happening. Yeah. Like I pretend I'm talking to someone. Yeah. You think some people? Uh, just naturally get along. Yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think so. I hate it when like you're really into someone, but the other person doesn't really care. 
Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Do you know why Isaiah is so good on teams? When there's someone else on the line, he will play his heart out. But in singles, you don't see that from Isaiah. You don't, it's not choking. He just doesn't care. He has that capability to be the best player on that day. But if he doesn't want to tap into that, if he doesn't want to harness it, it's a futile battle. Almost never gave it his all in singles, especially after the first few years, you know, game over, FC, things like that, he would try at, but um, the MLGs, he started giving less and less of a crap about singles as time went on. Isaiah is definitely the player that created like sandbagging to the extent it reached because he would intentionally lose to like really bad players. Eventually it got to the point where like people didn't even consider Isaiah a threat in singles, not because he wasn't good, because he never tried. He just didn't care, I guess. He'd go like peach on like poke floats. That was intentionally him just deciding, oh, I'll let this guy win. Sometimes I think that Isaiah didn't want to take the victory away from the person across from him. I think he'd rather lose and see the next person win than win himself and see the person across from him uh, to bomb down. Isaiah's too shy though. I, I spent all this time with him. As with Asim, similar, very quiet people. Um, I, I don't know that crippling is fair, but certainly a shyness that just absolutely changed the way he went through life and the way he went through the Smash community. What's your name? Why are you guys scared? Look at the camera, yeah. dog. Where are you from? I'm not too lazy to talk. Yo, your brother destroyed me. It wasn't even like funny. It was just sad. <laughs> it was just sad. I definitely don't know really what's inside him. I don't know how many people do, but I get the feeling that he's hiding a certain amount of his personality, and I have often suspected that he always hid a little bit of pain. And I don't know that, you know, I don't know his story really, but I do think it's interesting. His tag is, is little known where it came from. Um, Isai is how you would pronounce that, but it's just, Isaiah is just kind of what he's called, and it sounds like it's this thing that it's not. And the tag he puts on his, um, on Melee when he plays, the girl that he likes, a girl we don't Really know a lot about. Yeah, there's someone here I want to be friends with. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think she wants to be friends with me. Really? Was it your um, your playing partner? Yeah. 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 How do you know she doesn't want to be friends with you? Uh, just the way she acts around me. I have low self-confidence. Self yeah. yeah. I'm always nervous when I talk in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. Public speaking is the number one fear phobia in the country. Yeah, people like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say I'll say that's the number one response <laughs> to, to, to that fear. <laughs> Even as the team of Ken and Isaiah continued undefeated their singles careers slowly diverged. Besides an anomalous ninth place finish at TG6, Ken continued to place first at every major tournament he attended. By the end of 2004, Ken had won the MLG National Championship in New York and was the number one ranked player in the country. But for Isaiah, the singles bracket was becoming a burden. He's very weird in the aspects of competing in one versus one. He doesn't really want to try too hard. Every single time I beat him, I usually would apologize and be like, oh, sorry, Isaiah, or something like that, you know, because I know he's not always playing his best against me or, or anybody that he, he likes or his friends he would play his best against. The two teammates stepped into 2005 and the first tournament of the year, an independent major based out of Dallas, Texas, called The Most. It would be a notable tournament for several reasons. The state-of-the-art projector, the stadium-like seating for the finals. And for the first time ever, Isaiah would give it his all against Ken. I don't think the East Coast players wanted to go to that, so it was basically me and Isaiah against uh, the Midwest and uh, Caveman, Rob, and Tulu. Caveman and Rob were our best players, and so we'd have them fight Ken and Isaiah to see if they could do something. And they, they could not do it. So we had Ken and Isaiah finals. The winner of most three got a cape. It was a black cape and there was a big like silver kind of sword design on the back of it. And so I think Isaiah really won that cape because he played to win.
was unbelievable. I felt like they were both playing really well, and it was like the first like really hype finals, like people doing crazy stuff. Everyone usually like, kind of played scared in finals, and they were just going at it. It was just sort of like these two people who were just like so above the rest of us, like mere mortals, like putting on an exhibition. Coming out from a 2-0 deficit, the odds are never in your favor. This girl was there, you know, one of his Smash 64 uh, friends. I think her name is Melissa. That's why he always had the tag of Mel. You know, sometimes you have an additional reason to put a little extra. Melissa was actually cheering him on. And I really think, like, if she actually went to every tournament and supported Isaiah in, like, his singles career, he would probably be the best. He became a super saiyan in that tournament. That was like, like Smash was moving along like this, and then like people saw that, and like that's possible the game, then like the curve of the game grew, like people started getting so good so fast, and it's it's probably all because of that set. That was the first tournament where, you know, I I, I, I got utterly raped. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even, it was kind of close, but I, let's be honest, I got raped by it. Yeah. <laughs> now it's kind of standard, I guess, as a Falcon player. But back then, like, we never saw people moving around like that. And everyone used to love watching him. People would just talk about him playing. Like, we we just talk about Isaiah for like two hours. And it, it, that seemed to be the case with, with New York. Like, Ken was known as the best, but we'd always talk about Isaiah. Yeah, life would be tough. I haven't had a tough life, though. I've had an easy life. That's why I'm... That's why I think I'm really sensitive. It's because I've had an easy life. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's really like toughened me up. I've been getting better though. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Nice. So, yeah. Take a I mean, like, few more years. Mm -hmm. uh, some things take more practice than others oh, yeah. to be good at. Yeah. After most three, Isaiah, for the most part, returned to his old ways. 
but his spectacular performance against his teammate and the number one ranked smasher turned him into a legend. When asked by those seeking advice, Isaiah responded simply with a phrase which would soon become a mantra. Don't get hit. I used to have a shirt that said it. Wait, I might still have it. Did you really? I don't know if I still have it. I, I could, I would not be surprised if it's gone. He has this thing about him where at least in his prime, it seemed like he could literally pick when he wanted to win. Like he could just decide, okay, now I want to win and he could win that match if he felt like it. I'm sure like a lot of old school players will tell you this as well. He had this kind of aura about him that just seemed unbeatable if he felt like it, which, you know, didn't happen too often. But that's also why he was such a monster in teams because he always tried in teams, so, you know, because I guess he didn't want to let his teammate down or whatever. In the future, what do you see yourself doing? Still be hiking, playing SSB, hopefully making friends. Yeah. I think we got a lot. Yeah? You think you got all you need? Yeah, that's uh -huh. awesome. Yeah, this, this is me, <laughs> Isaiah. Smash guy, I guess. Oh, you don't understand. This is Destiny, we play right now. It's almost unseen in any competitive thing I've ever seen in my life. With him, he would just be all over you. He was rude and he was selfish. And he'd go online and talk mad trash. Mad, mad trash. I saw the Ken combo and I was like, Ugh. I mean, they're like, oh yeah, you wanna make this big. How much can I about yourself? You never had a nemesis. Dude, are you serious? Like, is this really that hype? After Isaiah won, he gave the cape to Mike G. We did Falcon Dojo, where we all went on FD with Falcon. It was me and Jeff and Dark Rain and Isaiah. And he'd just be like showing us stuff. He'd just be like, oh, try this. And he'd like show us something that we should do. And he said, here, practice this. It'll make you really good. Every now and again, like, he'd get angry and he'd be like, no, you're doing it wrong. He'd come to us. <laughs> <laughs> he went to, um... Hayato's house at one point. I guess Hayato was getting in a fight with his parents and Isaiah just walks into the room and goes, oh no, no, and then he runs away. <laughs>